Hello, Michael here with another Render Man tutorial. This week, um, I'm going to be going back a little bit. This is one for all you people who are pretty new to Render Man. I'm just going to be talking very briefly about how to apply textures to uh, your objects using Render Man and Render Man materials. I get actually asked this question quite a bit, so I just wanted to clear things up and make a really quick tutorial for people that are very new to Render Man and maybe to Maya as well. So before we get into it, there's two things that you need to understand. Um, there's a difference between textures and materials. Uh, when we talk about materials, we talk about sh we're talking about shaders and essentially what we're trying to make our object look like it's made out of. For example, um, say we wanted something to be made out of wood. So the material would be a wood-like material. Um, texture would talk about the color that's applied to it. So um, that would actually be the literal diffused color of the wood. So the material of the wood would be the way that the light interacts with it, the surface quality, the roughness, uh, the specularity. The texture is the literal color. So like, you know, shades of red and brown and orange and things like that, umber. So hopefully that makes sense. I'll, you'll understand a little bit more when I get uh, a bit further into the tutorial. But um, yeah, I'm just going to show you how you would go about applying textures to a very simple object. We'll start with a cube just by using the polygon cube there in Maya. So we've got a cube here. Um, we can't apply textures to this at the moment. We can apply a material. Um, however, this object doesn't have what's called a UV map applied to it. So I just tap space. I'm just going to go to the four panel layout. And if I go to this left top panel, I'm just going to change it to uh, UV editor. And now if I go back to my perspective camera and hold down the right click button and go to uh, UV shell, you'll see that you get the, the cube here. Um, it's unwrapped, um, which means it's, it's sort of opened up, if you will. Um, however, it's not been UV mapped. So when I mouse over this, you'll see it's all gone red. So I'm going to do a very quick UV map on this. And um, you can do this in my... Uh, automatically. Uh, this is not the way I would normally do it. I actually use a different program to UV map. But if you're doing it in Maya, this is a way to do UV maps on simple objects like cubes. If you go to UV with your cube selected and then go automatic, um, you'll see that the UV panel on the left here is now changed and you'll see that all the squares are individual. Um, and if I just go back to UV shell, you'll see that when I mouse over the different faces of the cube, um, they're all lighting up um, as individual planes in the UV layout. So that means this is um, being UV mapped. So now what I can do is export this as a texture map, as a texture file, and then I can paint over it in something like Photoshop, for example. This isn't the only way you could do it. You could actually paint directly onto the object in something like 3D Coat and then export the textures that way. Um, you could also UV map it in 3D Coat. That's the way I would do it. Um, however, just to keep things simple, I'm just going to show you how you do it from Maya. So to do that, we'll go into our UV um, layout, go to polygons, and then we'll go down to UV snapshot. Um, and this is where you determine where it's going to be saved to. So I'll just quickly choose a place on my hard drive. And uh, then we choose the, uh, the dimensions of our image. So 256 pixels is pretty small. Um, you're generally going to be using something like 1024 or higher. Um, for this, 1024 is fairly low resolution, but just for this example, that's what I'm going to use. Uh, actually, you know what, I'm going to do 2048 um, and maintain aspect ratio if you want to keep it square, which generally I would say you're going to do most of the time. Um, color value, white is fine. Um, Anti-alias lines, that's fine as well. It will just uh, maintain, um, so anti-aliasing will stop it from stepping so much if, you're, if you've got curves in your UV map. Image format, uh, you would generally want to use a lossless format, something like PNG or TIFF uh, or Targa. Um, I'm just going to use a JPEG though for this one because um, I just want to save some space on my computer. And UV range 0 to 1 um, is just talking about this quadrant here in the UV space. And generally that's what you're going to be working with. And if you're new to UV, don't worry about that other stuff. This is where you want to get everything fit into. And uh, once you're happy with that, um, you'll actually need to switch back to object mode. So hold down right click on your, um, on your perspective uh, view and then go to object mode and then select your object in which you want to export uh, the UVs of and then you click OK. So now we can open up that file in Photoshop and um, I'll show you how to paint on it. Um, I will actually just mention before we go on there, just for reference, uh, this top um, 
top square is this square here in the UV file and um, I just wanted to point that out because I'm going to put um, some color or something on there so um, you'll know why I'm putting it on that particular face. All right, so here we are in Photoshop and you'll see that I've already opened up the image. And you'll also see that all the faces that we UV just now in Maya are um, here represented in this two-dimensional image um, by these squares. Um, so before I draw on it, what I'm going to actually do is create a new layer um, because I don't want to, I don't want these white lines to appear on our um, UV so that would actually end up rendering and also the black wood so let's make this box a uh, pink color just for the hell of it and we'll do a fill there and then we can hide that and we can do another layer um, you could actually if you wanted to do this as an overlay you could maybe select this uh, background layer and then go to select by color range and we'll select the black and then we'll just uh, first we'll duplicate that layer or delete that old one and then now we can delete the um, the black area and then we can move that layer up and turn our pink back on. We can still see those outlines which we can turn on or off. Um, so you can you might want to rename those to UV lines or something like that or it would actually be UV if you want to use the correct term, UV seams. And then we can use this middle layer um, for painting a smiley face. And we can do uh, another smiley face, or maybe a sad face because it's blue. We can do another. We can do a sad face on this um, plane here. Uh, that's a sad face. All right. Um, so now that that is done, we want to hide our seams so um, so they're not visible in the renders, and then we can save this out and apply it. And you can save this as whatever you want, uh, whatever file type you want. Uh, I'm just going to go with JPEG for this example, but you, you generally want something lossless like a PNG um, or you'd want to save it as a TIFF or a TARGA um, or an EXR and we'll just call this Cube UV. Okay, so back in Maya now, uh, let's go to object mode and let's just bring up our perspective. So we've got the UVs applied to this, which means we've cut the seams out and we've separated all these planes into separate um, things that we can paint on. And um, when you're UVing, you don't necessarily have to separate every individual polygon, uh, just for this example I have. But in more complex UV layouts, you'd actually have multiple polygons in each polygon, uh, each UV island. Um, all right, so the first thing we need to do though is assign a material to our box. So select your box and click this button here, which is your Pixar surface, uh, which is just the default um, render man. Uh, default render man material and it's pretty much your all-purpose material that you'll use for everything um, So with your cube selected you can go into the hypershade editor Which is this button here and then you'll see that it's created this material and we can call this Pixar cube And now that we've got our material um, we can tell Maya what the uh, Texture that is assigned to this material so anything with this material assigned to it will have this texture also. So we're going to use the diffuse channel for this and we're going to go to the color and we're going to click that little checker box there. I'm going to go to file because we want to assign a texture file and then uh, with the file node selected we'll click that open button there and then we'll go to wherever you saved your texture and I've got that cube UV. Uh, I saved it as a PNG in there, not a JPEG. I just accidentally did that. That doesn't matter. File type is not particularly important in this example. And you'll see that we've got a preview there with our happy face and our sad face. So now um, you'll look at this and nothing's changed, but it's gone black. Um, so that's no good. If we want to preview the textures in the um, perspective view, uh, you can just click this little button here. And now that you'll see, it's got our smiley face there. Oh, and I nailed it. Sad face on the bottom. Um, so to render this up, let's just quickly put a light in the scene by going over to uh, uh, light and just clicking that button there. And then we can just do an IPR render by clicking the IPR button. All right, so you'll see that our cube has now got a texture applied to it as well as the pink color um, that we also t uh, painted in in Photoshop. All right, so um, one other thing that I'll mention, I'm just gonna create another light before I do. 
Okay, so I've just created a couple more lights in the scene just so we can um, see all the different faces except except this dark side here, that's fine though. Um, so I talked a little bit about material before and I just want to give a, a little bit further explanation on that. So uh, with our, our cube selected uh, and the attribute editor open here on the right in Maya, if you go over to um, Pixar Cube, which is the material that we created, which was based on the um, Pixar surface, um, you'll see you've got a couple of op options here. So um, the texture is the color of our uh, of our object, um, and the material is what it sort of what the surface quality is. So, for instance, if I turned up the face color um, on the primary specular, now the surface quality is that of a um, something that's a lot more reflective. You can see that reflection there, um, and the same way I can increase the roughness and make the surface appear, appear a lot more rough or I can increase the face color and then increase the roughness of that and it makes it um, look like a very rough but slightly um, shiny surface. So that's the difference between a material and a texture. I hope that's clear. Um, that language is really important, um, especially if you're asking questions, it pays to know the difference. So yeah, this is just a very simple tutorial for our beginners and um, I hope it's helped you out if you're starting out. And I hope you're enjoying RenderMan. It's a really cool uh, piece of software. Um, and I encourage you to keep looking um, at all the other tutorials I've got on my channel. And if you've got questions, feel free to ask them in the comments or you can message me directly if you want as well. Um, otherwise, that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching. Um, and if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe because you'll be getting two tutorials a week on YouTube uh, for all sorts of stuff, uh, not just random and other CG products as well. So yes, I hope you like this one. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.